Good morning and welcome to New Beginnings House of Worship as we come to worship a live and a living God. We thank you for your presence here with us this morning uh, as we get into our worship experience today. God has done marvelous and wonderful things in our lives and he continues to do wonderful and marvelous things in our lives. And so it is uh, necessary for us to, number one, worship and praise him and hear just what he has for us this day that we can embed it. Uh, enrich our lives uh, as we go into this worship experience. This morning, Sister Roslyn Turnham Seed is not with us, so I welcome you into this worship experience. Uh, we ask that you continue to keep her and my daughter in prayer as they will be returning from Augusta. She went down to visit her mother, uh, and so that they should be returning today. Uh, just pray for traveling grace for her and my daughter and all those traveling alongside them, that they'll be protected as well for God's protection over them. We thank you for that. Uh, we want to say happy Veterans Day weekend as our veterans have, uh, we celebrated Veterans Day on yesterday. Uh, my father, who's deceased now, he was a veteran. My sister, uh, Cynthia Turnipseed and Augusta, she's a veteran in our family and there are others, uh, cousins and whatnot. Uh, but we just say thank you for your service and all that God has given you to do in protecting us as we uh, go about our lives here in this country. We want you to, we want to also extend happy birthday wishes to all those out there. There were so many, I didn't have time to write them all down, uh, but happy birthday to you and anyone celebrating anniversaries, happy anniversary to you. We want to say happy uh, 107th anniversary to Roger Heights Baptist Church. We'll be going there to preach at the 11 o'clock hour Central Standard Time here in Nashville. That's at 2200 Whites Creek Pike. If anybody's in the area, I want to come out and celebrate with them as we come to deliver the word. We thank you. That's one reason we're here early today. We want to get our message in and get on over there to, that we can deliver God's word to God's people as they celebrate 107 years in service to God. Amen. And so let's get into our worship experience this day. Let's just open with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your grace and for your mercy. We thank you for all that you do in our lives, dear Lord, for waking us up this morning, for you had purpose and plan for us. Dear Lord, we thank you for the power in your word that we would hold fast to it and that we would make it a part of our lives. Be with Sister Rosalind and my daughter Rachelle as they travel home today. We bless them and all those that are traveling uh, land, sea, and air, dear Lord, bless them uh, that they would have safe journey to their destinations. We thank you now for the power of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would get your Bibles out now to uh, the book of Mark, Mark chapter 4, and we're going to lift up verses 1 through 9. We are in a series this month uh, for uh, portion of this month anyway, uh, and we want you to uh, follow along with this. This is our main text here, Mark chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. I'm going to read from the King James Version, but whatever version of the Bible you have, we want you to get that out. Our series theme is the seed I need, the seed I need. And so today is part one of this series, and we want you to go again to Mark chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. Mark chapter four, verses one through nine. And the word says, and he began again to teach by the seaside and there was gathered unto him a great multitude so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine, hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow and it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and yet, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30 and some 60 and some an hundred. And he said unto them, 
He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Amen. Thus ends the reading of God's word. And so just for a thought today on this series, the series again is titled The Seed I Need. Today's message, part one, is do you value the seed? Do you value the seed? And I know that we're not supposed to, uh, as they teach us in seminary, have a question for the sermon topic. But we're not in seminary right now. We're in worship. <laughs> so we're going to continue in this message today. Do you value the seed? The biblical truth that we want you to know about this message today is how you handle the word of God determines the blessings on your life. How you handle the word of God determines the blessings on your life. How do you respond to opportunity when it comes your way? How do you respond? Some people will embrace the opportunity. They see an opportunity to do something, uh, a chance to do something that they may have wanted to do all along and then think they can do it and that opportunity come. Some people will embrace the opportunity. They will do everything they need to do to make sure that they don't miss out on the opportunity. They'll follow the directions. They'll, they'll do whatever is needed to, to take advantage of the opportunity that was presented to them. But then some will make excuses as to why they shouldn't even consider it. You know those people. They hey, No, there, there's something behind that. They're trying to get you to do this. No, you just want me to this, that, and the other. No, I'm not going to hear listen to that because I heard that something else on social media. I heard my friends told me that this is how it should be. That they, somebody told me that you're going to try and get me to do this, that, or the other by putting this in front of me, and now uh, I don't want to trust you. Now, it's interesting to notice the things we'll take a chance on and those we'll pass up. When it comes to the Word of God, we don't want to hear what the preacher says sometimes. Some people, not all of us. Some people don't want to hear it. They're, they're tired of hearing it because people have all, all they say is just go pray about it. Uh, you're, you're blessed and this, that, and the other, and all the little uh, Christian sayings we throw at people, and people get tired of hearing that. I understand that. But you need to get into God's Word and develop a relationship with Him because when opportunity comes, when God's blessings come your way, when God's grace and mercy shines your way, are you ready to receive it? Or are you going to deny it and push it away? Sometimes we want to act like lone rangers and try to do everything on up for ourselves and by ourselves, and we can't do that. Sometimes we, we hear what is being said, but because something else is whispering in our ear, people under the direction of Satan, the adversary, trying to get us to do things other than what God has for us. God gave a perfect opportunity for man to live and, and the greatness that God created them and to be there in the garden and not have to worry about things and could live forever. But man passed it up by listening to the adversary and taking hold of what he said and then doing, uh, eating of the thing that God said don't. Doing the very thing God said don't do. Why? Because the adversary convinced them that it was better. We'll pass up things. You know, if we said that they were going to give $1,000 to everybody who showed up to church today. People will take that opportunity. There'll be some who say, oh, the church trying to trick you into this. The church trying to trick you into that. We'll, we'll take chances on things that we think that we can definitely get something out of because we value. It comes down to the value we place on things. And so what is the value you place on God's word in your life? You could see it by the way you live. And that brings us to our message today. And the first thing that we notice here in this text in verses 1 to 2 is that the people gathered around Jesus. That's good news. The people gathered around Jesus. Are you gathering around Jesus? Are you gathering around to hear the word? Or are you gathering around to get something else? You know, some people come to church for other reasons than the word. As we look into this text and, and we look into the word of God, uh, we see that Jesus on some occasions acknowledged that not everyone came to hear what he was saying, but they came for what they wanted. 
they saw food being passed out. People start following them so they can get some food. Some people saw people being healed, so they followed after, so they can get a healing. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to get your healing. But you have to be able to hear what the master is saying. And so as we look into this word today, knowing that some people come around and some people come into the church house for the wrong reason. Some people listen to the message and and uh, whether it's on uh, social media or on te television or whatever the case may be on the radio and we're listening for the wrong reason. We have other motives that come about. But notice in the text, Jesus gave the people what they needed. It says in verse one and two, and he began again to teach by the seaside. First thing you notice that he began to teach. He gave them what they needed. He gave them the word. And, and we have to stop wanting just to go to get a feel-good sermon and go home. We don't want to be taught anything. We don't want to learn a lesson in the message. People don't want to hear anything today. If, if there's a lesson behind it, don't tell me about it. You can tell me something else. We want something short, quick, and easy that makes me feel good. But Jesus, it says, and he began to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude. A lot of people coming in. And so we sometimes look at it when a lot of people come to church. Oh, we're going to have good service today. Oh, there was a the house was packed, but not everybody's there to hear the word. But that's okay. We're going to tell you some more about that in just a moment. So that he entered into a ship and sat on the sea and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And look what it says again. And he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine in the unit of this message where we're going to right now. He taught them some things in parables where that they can, he can make an analogy of things so that they can understand. And if you pay attention in the word, sometimes we say some of these parables are hard to understand. Jesus always explains them and he gave an explanation to his disciples of this, this message. But we, if we gather there, that means that we come to hear and because there's something of value there that we need. Jesus gave the people what they needed. Are we doing that in our churches? That's why it's so important for you to make sure that you are in a Bible-believing, a Bible-teaching church, that you can be strengthened and get just what you need. And then those other things will come if we're lining ourselves up with the Word of God. You know, we can't be worried about why people come to worship. There were people, Jesus mentioned, as we said, that some people came for other reasons, but he still taught them. Why? Because the people needed what he had. And it's upon us to receive it. We can't be worried about why people come to church if they're coming for this, that, and the other. And we sometimes will want to run people out or say this about people because they're coming for the wrong reason. No, give them the word. Let the word do its work. Instead, we need to make sure we add value to the lives of all those that come before us in worship. The people gathered around Jesus. And so when people come and gather together, what are we giving them? Are we adding value to their worship experience, to their lives? We know that people have need, and sometimes we'll withhold the need until they do some things we ask them to do. That's another message also. So as we look into this, not only do we notice that Jesus gave the people what they need as they gathered around him, we need to look at our life, our faulty lifestyles, our faulty lifestyles. Do you value the seed? We're going to tell you about the seed you need but you get to stay with us in this series. Today, we're going to deal with our faulty lifestyles as we look at how we really value the word that God gives us. It is our responsibility to understand the value of God's word. If we don't see any value in it, then that's on us. That's because we're not paying attention. When the word is preached to us, how do we treat it? <clears throat> <clears throat> Do we receive the word with gladness? Do we move on the word? Do we act on the word? Or do we have excuses for why we shouldn't do what it, need, what it asked us to do? Look in the text and we look into verses three and seven. It says, hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. 
Now, if we relate this parable to at someone planting a garden, when they go to plant their garden, they have one purpose in mind, that it would reproduce and bring forth a bounty. That's the blessing. That when we preach God's word, we're looking for, uh, we're doing it so that there would be a blessing in the lives of people that, that will multiply in their lives. So the sower sold. Preachers, are we preaching God's word? Are we sowing or are we singing? Are we sowing or are we satisfying people in the pews? Are we sowing or are we introducing salvation to God's people? If we sow the seed, it will do what it is designed to do. We can't worry about why people are there. We need to be able to address their need because there are faults in all of our lifestyles. And if we sit there and look at people as sinners because we are saved, then we, we got the wrong notion. We need to look at them as saved people waiting to be delivered from their sins. <laughs> the soul was sold. We need to make sure the word goes out. Not everyone cared enough about it to protect it. And we want to see what happens in those faulty lifestyles that will cause us not to protect the very thing that is designed to bless our lives and to give us just what we stand in need of. When we mishandle God's word and place no value on it in our lives, we end up missing the blessings God has for us. We see the blessing. It said some brought forth tenfold, thirtyfold, a hundredfold, but some people don't want, don't, don't see the value in it, so they never receive it. They're trying to get that blessing in other areas. And so we want to look at these faulty lifestyles that we lead, that we lead sometimes. Some of us may be living them right now. Some of us may have lived that and we see it in the lives of, of our family members, and we need to address those things. Some of us are slipping back into those faulty lifestyles. And we need to be careful what's going on. Make sure that we don't mishandle God's word in our life. The first thing that we want to see is the wayside. Look what it says in the text. And it came to pass as he sowed, verse 4, some fell by the wayside and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And sometimes we think about the wayside as just those people that don't even care about God's word, those people that don't even try to hear it, those people that are living just a, a foul life out there in the world and don't even try to hear what God is saying. But that's not really the context of this, this message. It says that they were by the, the word fell by the wayside. The sower spread the word there. They heard the word, but they didn't receive it. They came to church, they heard the word, but they became easy prey for Satan. Look at the explanation of this and down, down in verses 14 and 15, Mark 4, verses 14 and 15. It said, the sower sows the word, and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. They heard the word. They heard it. They were there. And there are people in our churches that come, but we come for the wrong reasons. So when we hear the word, it's immediately snatched up. They are easy prey for Satan. And when we are coming to church for the right reason, when we're not there for the right cause, and we're there for something else, then Satan will easily snatch the word away before it could even take root in our lives. Isn't that sad? That the very thing to bless your life is snatched away. You allow it to be snatched away by Satan, the adversary, by whispering things in your ears. And immediately he comes and takes the word away. There's some people that go to church and couldn't tell you what the preacher said. They can tell you everything else that went on. They might hear one good little hoop or holler that they may mention, but they'd have no idea what the message was about. And in some cases, the message wasn't about anything in the first place. Have mercy. No, I'm not trying to put anybody down. But we need to see the truth in what God is saying in his word. The wayside people come for reasons other than to hear the word. They use the church like a dating app. 
They want to go and meet somebody and get a hookup. Uh, they're looking for somebody in the choir. They're looking for somebody in the pews. They're looking for somebody to hook up with because they want a church girl or they want a, a church boy. Uh, they want something other than the word. They use the church for appearance and perfect attendance. If I show up all the time, then people are going to really know that I have it going on in my life, that I, I have, uh, I'm living the right kind of life, but uh, they live another lifestyle outside of the church. Why? Because Satan comes quickly and snatches up the word. They allow the adversary into their lives and he has perfect access to them to snatch it away. They use the church to get a blessing, but instead they miss the blessing. They're always there for a handout. They want to be blessed this way. And, oh, I got this problem in my life. I need you to take care of this for me. And they're coming to the church for the wrong reason. People by the wayside coming to church, hearing the word, and Satan snatches it up immediately before it could ever even take root in their heart. That's because they had no value in the word. Do you value the word? Do you value the seed in your life? Do you know the seed that you need? Maybe we're listening to the wrong people. Maybe we're at the wrong place at the wrong time. Maybe you need to be somewhere where the word is being taught that makes sure that you are paying attention and getting the word. But it, it doesn't matter if, if you're not valuing, placing any value on the word of God. The faulty lifestyle of the wayside. It's not that they're not coming to church or they're right there. They're just not hearing the word and applying it to their life. And they have no intention of hearing it. And that's why Satan comes immediately and snatches it up. The other faulty lifestyle is the stony ground lifestyle. The stony ground lifestyle. It says in verse five, and some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth. And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. It just shot up quickly. It didn't have enough depth. And so it's trying to, to stretch out and get all the nutrients it needs. But when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because it had no root, it withered away. The stony ground lifestyle. They are always shouting and praising, but it doesn't last long. Look what it says down there in the explanation, verse 16. And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground. The word comes to them. They're, they're hearing it. But listen to what it says. And these are they which are stone, sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Oh, they're happy and they're shouting for joy and have no root in themselves. And so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. We, those are the people that come to church and, and they shout and praise and roll in the aisle and all sorts of things. But when a little bit of storm come and rise because they don't really apply the word in their life, they haven't really valued it enough. They, they're too busy trying to be seen because they're coming there for the wrong reason. Maybe they're just like the wayside and now they have this stony ground, this stony heart. They are always shouting and praising, but it doesn't last. They put on a good show when the word is preached. Oh, they shout hallelujah and preach, preacher. Yeah, tell it. As long as you're preaching about something and that don't affect their life. They never let the word take root in their lives. They're not valuing the seed enough. They hear it. They, they just play around with it. Don't apply it. Don't, don't, don't fix their heart. Don't fix their mind. They are living life with a hardened heart. Because they don't want the, the power of God's word to come into their most sensitive areas of their lives. They don't want to be vulnerable. And you have to make yourself vulnerable. That's what surrender is all about. When we give our lives to the Lord, we surrender our lives to him. Why? Because he is the one that we put our trust in as Lord and master of our lives. It said when it falls on that stony ground, they immediately receive it with gladness, but they have no root in themselves. What's, you got to get to the root of the matter. <laughs> I 
I talk a lot about in gardening, when, when you're, you're taking care of the soil, you got to get those weeds out of there and, and get those out. And we'll talk about that maybe a little bit later. But, but the importance of the root system. It's so important that if if you have enough ground, you got to get those stones out of there. You got to get the rocks out of there. You got to break up that ground so that the seed can get down and it's going to push its way through. Have you ever noticed traveling along the side of the road, traveling along the highway and you look on the side of the road and see the rocks and you see trees growing up out of there? That's because the seed is going to do everything it can to push forward, to get the nourishment that it needs. It'll even go through rock if it have to. But guess what? Because our hearts are so stony sometimes that it just shoots up quickly. And then when the heat of the day comes, you've seen those plants that look real stringy. They're coming up. You can, I can, you can bet that they're going to die pretty soon. Because as soon as the heat comes their way, they're going to be too weak and not have enough strength. And they just fall over, curl up and die. That's what happened to the word in our life. It curls up and die because what? our hearts weren't prepared for it. Yes, we get up there and put on a good show. We receive, when we hear it, we just, we're happy and shouting for joy and we're so busy shouting and praising and rolling in the aisle and letting people see us dance and all of this stuff that we don't even let the word come into our heart and take root the way it should. We don't prepare our heart. We don't prepare our mind. That same Filthy, stinking thinking that's been going on in our lives continues to go on. And so it chokes it out. It, it doesn't give it a chance. And so when any little bit of ad, ad, <laughs> adversity comes in our life, we, get, we, we produce failure and we get upset with the church. We get upset with God. We say, well, you know, I, I, I went out and did such and such. You know, and then in scripture tells us that about these young men who saw the disciples out there casting out demons. And they were like, hey, these seven sons of Sceva. And they said, you know what? We want that. We're going to go out there and do the same thing. And they tried to cast a demon out of this man, demons out of one, one man. And those multitude of demons came out and jumped on them, stripped, beat them and stripped them naked. Because they did not have, uh, they did not really value the word. They saw something. They wanted something for themselves. And they didn't have the right mindset or the right heart about the word. So they, they couldn't do great things. Not only do we have wayside lifestyles. Not only do we have stony ground, hard and hard lifestyles. But the last lifestyle that we're going to look at today and this faulty lifestyle that we need. Then we're talking about the seed I need. I need the word of God. I need the, the precious word of God and I need it to live in my life. Well, then I need to do some things to change my lifestyle. And the last lifestyle that we look at is the thorny lifestyle. It, look what it says in the text. And we, we're going to go in and read from this latter part of the text. And, and these are they which are sown among the thorns, verse 18, such as hear the word and the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word and it become unfruitful mm. because they're living the thorny lifestyle. They hear the word, but are distracted by other things. They are more concerned about the cares of the world. And what are those things that come in and choke out the, the power of God's word in your life? Because you allow it to come in. You don't give attention to the word. You're allowing those, those roots of the, the, uh, <laughs> of the uh, uh, weeds come in and, and choke out your, your vegetables. Uh, as I talk about uh, clearing your garden and breaking up that ground. And so we were talking about taking those roots out. And I tell people, don't just sit there and, and pull and snap it off and break, the, break it from the top because you leave that root in there and it's just going to reproduce more. That root will start to go further down and it will anchor itself in, especially dandelions. It will anchor further down and it will keep growing and produce more. You thought you killed it. So when I break up my soil, I'm out there working my hands in the soil and, and I go through there and I can see the root system, little fine, thin hairs. And some of those may survive and some of them, but when they're balled up together, those, that network of root systems will reproduce again and, and produce more. And it gets 
thicker and it gets harder to remove it. You have to get those roots out of there so that the root system of the plant will be able to take the nourishment and, and nourish itself and produce abundantly. There are some roots, some weeds that will grow. They try their best to get right into the plant system's root system. Because if it intertwines with it, if you pull it up, you're going to destroy the plant. And the, and and we, we look at it and think, so is the plant thinking? No. Systems, God's creation knows how to survive better than we know how to survive. And so when we get into this thorny lifestyle, we are dealing with issues in our life by being distracted by what the world has to say. Why? Because we are allowing it to stay in our life. We think we've gotten rid of some things in our lives, but we haven't really applied the word to our thinking or to the way we uh, treat things emotionally within our heart. If you have a hardened heart towards people, you'll never really treat them with love and the respect that God says that we're supposed to give to the world. They are more concerned about the cares of the world, the thorny lifestyle people. They value the things that make them appear rich. Look at what it said in this text. It says, and in verse 19, and the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of the things of other things entering in other things other things than the word of god the word of god is trying to get into your heart ladies and gentlemen the word of god is trying to bless us immensely if we would only place value on it. the lust after everything in the world they lust after everything in the world that that the world offers to them that's a thorny lifestyle if you ever fell among thorns, they, they prick you and they hurt you and they mean you no good. And we fall among thorns in our lifestyle and we get pricked and we get destroyed by the things that the world is offering us. We have to stop looking and listening to what the world says. When we value God's word, we put effort into caring for it in our lives. We treat it with care. We nurture it. And we give it everything, all the attention it desires, it deserves, excuse me, in our lives. And we make sure that God's word is, is enriching us in a way that makes a difference in our lives. Do you value the seed? Do you? If you really value the seed, you will see the, the results of it in your life. Are you bringing forth more than what you get out of the word? Are you going on your job and helping people more than you received when you first started on your job? Do you want to experience the blessings that God has for you? Prepare your heart and your mind daily to receive the word of God. Don't just come and look for it on Sunday morning, but you have to prepare your heart and your mind on a daily basis by reading the word of God. When you don't understand it, ask God. Go in prayer. Yes, prayer is necessary. I know you hear people telling you all the time to pray about it, but no, if you go and communicate with God, have a honest conversation with God. No, it's not about your position all the time, how you do it and the words you say. You need to just open up and be honest with God. Lord, have mercy on me. Show me my faults. Show me the things that I need to do. Show me the plans you have for me, the plans to bless me and to not do me harm. We need to prepare our hearts and minds on a daily basis to receive the truth and the power of God's word. We need to recognize when we have allowed the lies of Satan to snatch away the truth of God's word in our life. We need to recognize when the joy of God's word is temporary in our lives, when we just they're shouting and praising and not really allowing it to really take full effect in our lives. And then we, when trouble comes our way, we're blaming everybody and even blaming God. We need to recognize when the ways of the world are more important to us than what God's word says to us. We need to sever those ties. We need to stop listening to what Satan is saying to us because he's a liar and he's the father of lies. But when you value something, you take good care of it. So nurture the seed God has given you and watch your life turn around. God has many blessings in store for you, but it starts with making Jesus 
the Lord of your life. You need to surrender your life to Jesus. Become vulnerable to the one who loves you so much that he first died for you so that you could have eternal life. He didn't just die and never come back to do anything, but he came back in the power of God's word. Why? Because he valued the word of God and he allowed it to work a perfect work in his life that he could be the matchless, sinless son of God, the, the only one able to restore us and redeem us back to God uh, through salvation, only through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. So if you're out there right now and you're tired of living the faulty lifestyle, you're ready to place some value on the word that you hear from God. You're listening right now and you, you sometimes wonder, you know, what this church thing is all about. And you may have gone and you tried church before and now you, you, you strayed away because you got tired of all the games that people are playing, the hypocrisy that you see in church. Don't give up on God because of what you see in man. Let me say that again. Don't give up on God because of what you see in man. You need to see the truth of what God says in his word and you apply it in your life and you be the change that the world needs because you are taking in the word of God. We're going to continue this series, The Seed I Need. But we, we, right now, we ask that if there's anybody out there that wants to give their life to the Lord right now, put your name in the comment section right now, and we'll get in touch with you and help you see and do just what you need to do and, and recognize when you have truly given your life to the Lord, the blessings that God has for you. It's a growth process. You're not going to just jump in this thing and just be the best person you can be. It's a growing process. And so you might make mistakes along the way. Don't you get give up and don't you give in. You continue to hold on to what God's word is. And if you're out there, we'd love to have you be a part of this ministry. But the most important thing is that you become a part of the believing body of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that God will bless you and redeem you and give you the salvation you need. If you're out there and don't want to put your name in the comment section, just go on and you can contact me at 615-473-5464. That's 615-473-5464. And I will get in touch with you. Just leave me a message. You can leave a voicemail message or you can just send me a text message and we'll be with you, get with you and help you see. My name is Julius Turnipseed. I'm pastor of New Beginnings House of Worship. And just leave a message for me, Pastor Turnipseed, uh, and just let me know that you want to get your life right and you want to give your life to Jesus. Again, that number is 615-473-5464. It's posted with this message today. We thank you and we ask God's blessings upon your life. We want you to continue with us in this series uh, as we'll come back with you on, on at least two more messages in this series uh, that will understand that the seed that I really need in my life. Do you value the seed? Do you value the word that God has spread into your life? No matter where you are, no matter where you hear it, you need to place value on it, listen to it, be obedient to what God's word says. Get some help along the way. Don't try to do this thing alone. In our Bible study on yesterday, we talked about uh, the fact that we're not alone and we have to work together with others to get to hear what God has to say to us. God bless you and God keep you. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance unto you and give you peace. If you're out there and looking for uh, some another worship experience, come on and over to Roger Heights. We'll be celebrating with them at the 11 o'clock hour. Uh, celebrating their 107th anniversary. They're at 2200 Whites Creek Pike here in Nashville, Tennessee. God bless you. Until next week, we'll see you again. <laughs>